Welcome everyone to Finding a Home for Innovation, Part 2. And um, today we are going to have a virtual tour of the Wexford Building on the Phoenix Biomedical Campus, um, hosted by Kyle Jardine of Wexford. And um, Kyle has been a really close, wonderful partner working with us as we saw this go from shovels and dirt um, to a skeletal frame and now to an open, fabulous facility for innovation right in the heart of downtown Phoenix. And um, with that, I would like to turn it over to Kyle so that you can uh, take us on a tour. Thanks, Joan. Appreciate that. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. I uh, see some familiar faces and some that I do not know. Uh, so look forward to, to meeting all of you and uh, taking you a little, on a little, little tour and giving you some more information about uh, our building as well as uh, the, the Phoenix Biomedical Campus. So 850 North 5th Street is the address, and, and 850 is kind of uh, the, the name of the building, 850 PVC. So it's on the Phoenix Biomedical Campus. A lot of people refer to it as a variety of different names, and the names kind of evolve in development projects. That's kind of where, where things go with that. Uh, it's A lot of people refer to it as the Wexford Building or the PVC Innovation Center or, or kind of a variety of names. But... Uh, 850 PBC is kind of where, where we would like things to trend to really put the focus on the destination. This is one of multiple buildings uh, on the Phoenix Biomedical Campus and not the only. Uh, and so we, we want to kind of leverage that. Uh, I'll take you through a, a few slides, and, uh, but first I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick off with a, a little video, uh, giving you a little taste of what, what it looks like today and, and uh, what it would look like if you were here in person with me in the building. So I'll share my other screen here and, uh, and show you this video. That's a little little taste of the the building. I'll go into some more details of what actually uh, you saw there and and what all is entailed in that. Um, but kind of gives you a feel for what for what it's like. And uh, and unfortunately, you can't all be here in person and and walk it because uh, some of the views just don't quite uh, come come across on camera like they they do in person. Um, and feel free if there's questions as we go along. I'd, I'd love love for there to be any questions, any uh, anything that you want to share. Uh, happy to happy to discuss those or, or address uh, questions. I'll share my screen again and uh, 
take you through some, some photos and some little more information about the area and about uh, the Phoenix Biomedical Campus as a whole as well. So some of our partners, that, that's, I got to make sure to, to kind of bring that front and center as this project wouldn't have been possible without ASU, the city of Phoenix, uh, the Phoenix Biomedical Campus and the vision of so many of you and, and uh, so many within in the city and in greater Phoenix area uh, that made this location such a vibrant place uh, and, and what it is. And then we also have the, the Center for Entrepreneur, Entrepreneurial Innovation uh, with Gateway Community College, Maricopa Community Colleges that's been a, a great uh, partner as well and a tenant in the building. 850 North 5th Street is, is a very unique project, uh, kind of first of its kind here in the state of Arizona, but uh, one of uh, many that Wexford uh, Science and Technology has developed. I'll tell you a little bit about our company, what we do, and, and kind of where the vision is for, for this project and future projects. Uh, the building itself, there's a rendering. Uh, I always like it when renderings turn out like the real thing. Uh, it's almost almost identical, a few things here and there. One thing I like to keep the rendering up is because there's lots of people in it and that's something that's a big priority for us and we look forward to the future of being able to gather in person and, and have events and, and uh, collaborate and innovate together. The building itself is 227,000 square feet, uh, seven levels, uh, fully lab enabled on every floor and we delivered the building Q4 of last year. Uh, first occupants moved in about six weeks ago uh, with ASU's third floor uh, taking occupancy and then there's a, there's a few others uh, with CEI occupying as well. A um, little bit about Wexford, uh, Wexford Science and Technology, we are a real estate development company based out of Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, all we do uh, every in every market that we go is we partner with uh, institutional research groups uh, such as universities or research hospitals or other type of organizations and we build innovation districts. We refer to them as knowledge communities. Uh, we have uh, 15 with six, number 16 underway with the project we're working on in Sacramento uh, approaching 10 million square feet across the country. Uh, this project is a project in Philadelphia uh, where we've done about a million and a half square feet over the last 12 years there. Uh, and this is a fully lab enabled 14 story building. Uh, so little taste of what the future of Phoenix could be. Some of our relationships and partners, uh, primarily in the Eastern United States to date, uh, Phoenix is our first Western United States market, uh, which I lead that efforts here and then our expansion to other Western United States uh, is work, work with my colleague that Doug Woodruff to, to move forward that. Um, but one of the well, unique things about being a, a tenant with us or, or we like to refer to it as a partner or true relationship um, is that it also opens up to a lot of relationships across our portfolio with other universities. Uh, we do summits uh, with our university partners, with our corporate partners uh, and provides a lot of connection or soft landing opportunities in other markets as well. What, uh, what makes a knowledge community? Why, why a knowledge community? Why an innovation district? Why does that matter? As anchoring with an institutional value and the commercialization of research that comes with institutions. Uh, we love the Phoenix Biomedical Campus for a number of reasons, but one of them is that all three state universities are here and it's the only place in the state that they all co-locate co and collaborate. There's collaborations other places in the state, but the presence here is, is very strong uh, with all three state universities. And then also with a variety of others that are in close proximity with Creighton uh, University building uh, nursing and medical school uh, just a few blocks away. Uh, <clears throat> innovation infrastructure. So allowing for flexibility in in the uses, excuse some of the background noise. Uh, sorry, we still got some construction going on adjacent to us. Busy, busy downtown, and it's wonderful. Uh, small labs, shared lab facilities, uh, events and programming, really activating the space with a variety of users, a variety of uses, uh, and a variety of hours. 
and then the environment just uh, of a mixed use strong environment we love the live work play learn discover heal kind of model right it's not just just one thing that's going on in the area or the neighborhood it's it's a whole variety and that's really what builds that community and an engagement and collaboration opportunities uh, for workforce development for connection with the arts community connection with music music community uh, connection with the different academic institutions the city the nonprofits uh, not just focused on corporate growth um, so what elements does the Phoenix biomedical campus have uh, that kind of fit that built environment is, is phenomenal there's been a lot of, of growth and still a lot of runway uh, that's one of the things we really like is uh, we try not to go to a market without the ability to build a million square feet or more over a 10, 10 year period. And then we are a long term hold company as well. And uh, we we've been around for 15 years and still manage every asset that we've built and are very involved in each of those those communities. Uh, we also love about Phoenix Biomedical Campus that it's not in every location that we go is there's a ton of residential opportunities, restaurant opportunities, hotels, proximity to the airport, proximity to the convention center, uh, proximity to government agencies. There's a lot that's going on in the built environment adjacent to the site. Uh, innovation ecosystem is strong as well. Uh, anchored, the Phoenix Biomedical Campus is kind of anchored by the, Translational, research, or Translational Genomics Institute, TGen, and uh, many of you know lots more about their history than I do, uh, but phenomenal group that we've enjoyed uh, rubbing shoulders with and being neighbors with and the spin out companies that uh, they continually produce. Uh, ASU, uh, the Heal Lab, uh, which we can touch on later if, if anybody has questions, the Health Entrepreneurship Accelerator Lab is, is a has a location in our first floor of the building and then CEI also has an expansion to their incubation space, uh, the gateway campus, this in our building on the first floor. And then workforce development, economic inclusion, really connecting with being able to help people upskill and grow and get certifications. We love being next to the bioscience high school. I have four interns working with me right now from the bioscience high school. And it's, it's, we look, we're looking for a great, uh, partnership there and future internships and, and growth for those wonderful students that are are uh, super sharp and and excited about their career opportunities a uh, variety of others and a lot of things that uh, your groups are are involved in or are connected with and then such as az bio and other programming uh, programming and events is also a, a huge priority for us. We're not uh, a sit back and real estate transaction focused uh, development company. We want to get engaged and work with our tenants and help, help uh, really make connections between our tenants and our university partners and, and others. So, and if anybody has questions, feel free to stop me and, and, let, let me know. This is the location of the building and the PVC. So downtown core is right here. ASU's downtown campus kind of spreads across uh, the space. ASU's nursing school, the Mercado on the south side, and 850 is on the north side of the PVC. Uh, and PVC encompasses about 30 acres. And U of A college Medicine Phoenix is right here. Uh, and this is the Dignity Cancer Research Center, TGen, variety of others. And then the adjacency to all the residential housing and Roosevelt Row and the Arts District is, is a huge, huge benefit and an engagement opportunity. A little bit more about the PVC and Claudia, if you wanna jump in at any point, feel free. But the Phoenix Biomedical Campus kind of came from, from a variety of people's visions and, and uh, leadership from the city, from, from the Flynn Foundation, from the universities. Uh, great, great vision and, and the Board of Regents uh, to really build uh, a 
innovation district that incorporates, incorporates all of the elements that we've discussed. Uh, lots of great things going on here. All the universities, TGen, uh, congratulations to the acquisition of uh, Exact Science is acquiring another company yesterday with Ashiana Analytics. That's Shion. Uh, so exciting. Um, great story. And then uh, connection to so many other uh, great collaborative elements in the Phoenix Biomedical Campus. Here's just kind of some pictures. Uh, I, I enjoy this picture that the city put together and a cartoon scenario of, of all of the awesome elements that are here. And it, when you see it in this slide, it uh, helps you realize that there's just a ton going on um, with the connections of from entertainment to light rail to connections to the airport to the built environment with TGen and all of the companies that are located in their building with them and connections to all of the major hospitals with Banner and Dignity, St. Joseph's, Phoenix Children. Uh, so many, so many great things going on in the area. Here's the master plan for the Phoenix Biomedical Campus. Uh, so right now, uh, building 11, 15, 13, 12, 14, none of those exist. Those are all vacant ground. 10 is 850. Uh, 17, 18 don't exist. And 19 doesn't exist. There's a there's lot of potential growth here in this area, uh, both by the universities and private development. Uh, for the future. This is 850 and kind of the future growth plans to kind of give you context. So this is 5th Street and Garfield, so 4th Street here. Uh, you've got exits from I-10 on 7th Street and on 3rd Street on both sides of the project. Uh, there'll be a future building two and a parking structure building three, building four, potentially building five uh, over the next uh, number of years. That's what the building looks like uh, as of about six weeks ago. Uh, the parking lots are almost complete now uh, for the building. And I'm just gonna kind of take you through a little uh, number of, of, of pictures as well. So just kind of get a feel for it. So the main entrance to the building is, is right here. That's where you came in on the video, kind of fly through into the lobby area. Uh, lobby's what you see behind me. And well, this is the north side of the building. Looking south. Uh, so we're on the mo northern edge of Phoenix Biomedical Campus. This is the south side of the building. The whole building, the play on the architectural portion of the building uh, was based off of the saguaro cactus. So these spines that you see here that twist uh, are based off of the spines of the saguaro cactus and uh, taken to an arch architectural element uh, with these sunshades uh, that also help with our, our sustainability criteria for the building. As you see, that continues. So a little bit more dense on the east and west sides and south side, and then no, no sun shades on the, the north side. The building as a whole, how, how is it uh, made up? We love to look at our buildings as communities, and, and they're stacked communities is really what they are. And uh, this kind of portrays what that looks like. Um, Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation uh, is here. In the orange, our main lobby is here in the tan. And we have loading bays, a future restaurant space that I'm standing in right now, my temporary office. Um, and then as we move up the building, uh, also on the other side of the space is the NASU, uh, the Edson Entrepreneurship and Innovation Institute space with the Heal Lab with Rick Hall and Jimmy Choi uh, share that space for events, programming, student-led entrepreneurship activities. Um, and then as we work up the building, uh, start getting the different layers of, of innovation and connection and collaboration. Second floor is half of a conference center. And I'll show you some pictures of some of these areas. Uh, half a conference center for ASU use, a variety of different conference rooms, uh, large break room. And then the second half of 
the second floor is the translational research center, uh, which is human clinical trials can be performed there. Uh, it's 11 uh, flex exam rooms that participants can come and they can be fed a meal, do blood draws, process the draws or sample testings right there in the lab adjacent to it. Uh, there's a large fitness center for performance training or, or evaluation of uh, any, any activities so somebody can come and uh, eat a meal, draw some blood and run on the treadmill for, for an hour and, and evaluate the whole process and all the other details. I'm obviously not a scientist as you can tell, um, but uh, exciting use. And that's a core facility for ASU. So people from Tempe or uh, from other locations of ASU research can come and utilize this space. The third and fourth floors are full wet lab spaces. So the lab benches that you saw in the video are, are images from those floors. Uh, the third floor is occupied by ASU uh, researchers currently today. There's research going on there uh, with health solutions, uh, researchers, uh, nursing, uh, engineering researchers, uh, so interdisciplinary. And the fourth floor, I'll have future researchers uh, in that space, uh, but currently uh, do not have ASU researchers there yet. And then the fifth, sixth, and seventh floors are fully lab-enabled shell space. So they're ready to be built out for uh, private companies and private users. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause there and see if there's any questions. Uh, design team and construction team, great, great question, Eric Daniels. Uh, so the design team was HKS uh, with Henderson Engineers and a variety of other consultants. Uh, list too long to start going through all of them. So lots of great consultants that did a, a phenomenal job. Uh, and then the construction team, the, the project was built by Oakland Construction and they've done a phenomenal job. We really enjoyed working with them. Uh, and they, they are the preferred contractor for all of the tenant, tenant build outs as, as well. Another question coming in, uh, the timing of start of building two. The faster we can lease up building one, the faster we start building two is the short answer. Uh, so uh, we have some preliminary designs for building two already, and I've had discussions uh, with ASU and the city about that, and uh, hope, to, hope to have a, a start within the next 12 to 18 months is, is the hope. Uh, we'll see where, see where things go with leasing. Any other questions before I kind of, I'll give you some more interior photos and, and a view of the interior of the project and talk more details on available space. So talk a little bit about the stacking of the building. Uh, sorry, go back here. This is the first floor, just kind of give you a visual of what that, how that breaks down. So enter into the lobby. The lobby is what you see behind me. Uh, our lobby is, has multiple uses and kind of multiple functions. Uh, we can utilize it for events. We have a quasi stage in the lobby that can be used for presentations, pitch events. Any of our tenants can use it. Community uh, can use it. We'll rent out the space uh, for events. Uh, we've had discussions with ABC Bio for some events in, in October and other, other groups uh, as well uh, during uh, AZ Bio week. And so hopefully we'll all be able to gather in there in the future. Uh, Center for Entrepreneurship Innovation has uh, about 6,500 square feet here. Uh, their space is, is great, uh, multifunctional as well. They can do events, they can do trainings. Uh, two of the main programs that they will have there is one, the Lab Force program, uh, which we're very excited for and supportive of is that's the workforce development portion of their uh, group. So somebody can come in and, and get a laboratory technician certification and then go work upstairs. Um, so that that's launched and uh, going and uh, primarily online right now, but there's training rooms there as well. So they can come and get certified on specific equipment or do presentations or uh, discussions or hands-on training as well. Uh, the other program that 
uh, CEI has theirs, uh, their validation lab. Uh, Carly Figman's running that. Um, this is uh, a program that uh, they're in their second cohort right now, and it brings, and some of you may have participated or maybe are familiar with that, uh, can be a better testimonial than I am, uh, that that program basically takes early startup ideas and helps validate market size, uh, business plan, kind of strengths and weaknesses of that idea and, and helps prove it out to hopefully by the end of the, the course, uh, have a better feel of direction where, where you could go with your idea. It's a great program. Uh, other space on the first floor is ASU's. Uh, it's an entrepreneurship and uh, innovation institute space. Uh, so Rick Hall, Taylor Silverstein and the Heal Lab uh, are here. Uh, and, and we'll run events out of this space. Jimmy Choi and her team and connection with Skysong and Skysong Innovations and others uh, will uh, also run programs out of here, uh, seminar speakers, trainings, events, uh, advisory groups, mentoring, things like that. Uh, so very active first floor. Uh, we've got our loading docks, we've got our core elements, and then a future, future restaurant space on the first floor. So. As, as COVID calms down and we're able to start gathering more, uh, this will become very, very active first floor. Uh, it's already activated to some degree uh, in social distance and, and uh, less, less people for sure. Um, but this lobby, we want to kind of view it as a community asset uh, in, our, in our patio area uh, that we have furniture out in both of these areas and feel free to come if you're if you're downtown or if you're adjacent or, or at a, somewhere else, feel free to come and utilize the space uh, and work out of it, have small meetings, things like that. This is a view of the lobby as you enter the front doors. Uh, so variety of seating options, flexibility. This is the quasi stage that I mentioned, so we can have presentations here or other uh, pitch events, a uh, variety of different things, or we can do small receptions or things like that in this space. This is a view of, uh, this is an older picture. We've got a table in here and a few things that way uh, sense, but I wanted to get you a sense of some of our local artists. We've loved working with Roosevelt Row and the artists that are here. We work with ArtLink, uh, a local art uh, procurement group and connection. So we, we commissioned these three pieces. I'll show you them in a little bit more detail, but they all tie back to the blend between life sciences and the desert flora and what's, what's going on there. So this is a piece by Kayla Noonan. Uh, this is DNA strand of the saguaro cactus and the literal blending of the saguaro cactus with the DNA. Um, and then there's some kind of hidden figures and a variety of other things that she played on to uh, take the desert flora and make it a little bit more cell-like or amoeba-ish or uh, life science twist to it. So. This is a piece called Hybrid Forms by Jennifer Stratman. Uh, this is molten uh, bronze that she has made into these amoeba shapes. And then there's a variety of different uh, plays on in things. And then she also did casting in the bronze elements of different cacti or succulents or flowers uh, out of her garden or some sculptures. So pretty fun piece, uh, hard to capture in a photo. It looks way better in person. And then this is uh, a piece uh, by Christine Cassano. Uh, this is a ceiling sculpture. So this is suspended from the ceiling in the south lobby. And this piece is based off of the DNA sequence of the saguaro cactus. So Christine worked with an ASU researcher, got the sequence of the DNA, uh, the DNA sequence of the saguaro cactus and, and kind of took it in her own form and her own style. This is a view of the entrance to the CEI space, the lab force program. Um, and then there's a variety of spaces, conference rooms. Uh, there's an event space right behind this and, and other spaces. This, I'm gonna kind of take you up the building uh, as shown in the pictures. Some of these were in the video, you'll see, but this is a part of ASU's break room on the second floor. You can see the bioscience high school here. Uh, U of A is back here. Uh, and then our parking uh, to the south. This is one of the ASU's training rooms on the second floor as part of their conference center as well. 
the clinical space on the second floor is still uh, they're still moving in furniture, so I didn't I didn't include any pictures on that uh, that space yet, but uh, very nice clinical clinical space there. Uh, this is uh, some views of the third floor. So this is one of the conference rooms on the third floor. Some of the collaboration spaces on the third floor. So this is all ASU space. Uh, and then here's some some photos of ASU's laboratory spaces. So uh, this is the science on display windows. So you can come out of the elevator court, elevator lobby, and this is what you see. Uh, you see straight through these windows into the laboratory spaces. Uh, and now on the third floor, these are bustling and, and full of equipment and supplies uh, and researchers. Just a few more views of kind of what's going on in, in ASU space. So they have some common fume hood alcoves uh, and then a variety of open neighborhood benches and, and lab support rooms. A little bit about the building, so kind of like uh, other a amenities, assets of the building, health and wellness is a huge, huge priority to us. 50% uh, outdoor air filtration, uh, which will, does, does a lot in in the COVID environment specifically, um, and then 100% outside air, one pass through on the, uh, the lab spaces. Uh, incorporated a lot of touchless design and with water bottle filtration or water bottle filler stations, touchless in the uh, restrooms, and trying to just really uh, protect and, and help uh, everybody in our tenants and those who come to the space. Uh, vent space, we kind of talked about. Uh, public transportation connection, it's just a few, we're three blocks from light rail, uh, which connects to the valley, uh, which is it's a great asset, or just straight to the airport. If, uh, if you have people coming in, they can take light rail to the building. Uh, adjacency to the arts district, 50 plus, restaurants, bars, cafes within a five minute walking area. I'm not from Phoenix. I'm, I'm originally from Salt Lake and didn't know anything about Phoenix downtown too much other than my wife's from North Phoenix and her family never came down here. And I've absolutely loved working down here. Uh, new restaurants all over the time, even through COVID, the restaurants have thrived. Uh, there's been, there's, there's a net increase of restaurants in downtown over the last year. Uh, so more have opened than have closed in downtown, uh, which is shows a lot. Um, and then the dynamic living opportunities, uh, 8,000 plus housing units uh, within a one mile radius of the, of the project um, for sale and for rent op options. Uh, so great live, work, play, learn opportunities, as well as uh, all of the students that are, that are downtown which is a great uh, activation piece as well. The building itself is going to be certified LEED Gold. Uh, we're excited to, you're the first to hear that, and we're excited to be able to announce that. Um, the, we, targeted, we targeted LEED Gold, but have always kind of said it would be LEED Silver just to be safe, and we've achieved our, our goal of LEED Gold, so 16% energy cost savings over a typical building, lots of uh, waste reduction uh, throughout construction and during our uh, operations as well. Um, and then a variety of other things uh, such as we have uh, lockers and showers in, the, in lower levels so people can bike to work and store their bike here and, and shower if they need to um, before or after work and, uh, as well as water, water uh, efficiencies, energy efficiencies. Um, and then talk a little bit about the space that's available. So I'll, pa I'll pause here again. Uh, let me know if there's any, I'm gonna check the chat, see if there's any questions. Uh, let's, let's see here, Jared, join late. Are there any plans uh, in the park for pilot scale manufacturing as tenants grown this is uh, a great, great question, Jared. Uh, this has been a discussion that we have had and we have done in other markets. Uh, we have done uh, 
GMP, CPMG spaces in other markets and have had discussions about doing smaller scale or a uh, contract manufacturing group in the, the area as a whole. Uh, to date, there's nothing solidified there, but uh, there are others that have asked the same question. And so there may be demand and that's definitely something we're, worth, we're willing to discuss and, and look into. This uh, is a typical uh, shelf floor. So the fifth, sixth, and seventh floors are all open like this. Uh, so it's a Z corridor connections, the, the elevators, the restrooms, the mechanical shafts, the stairways are all in place. Um, and if you were to come today, we'd take the elevator up to these floors and, and then all of the rest of the space is just open shelf space that looks like this. Uh, so this is the seventh floor of the building. Uh, the views are quite stunning. Uh, I love the, the thought and, and the reality that's going to happen here of uh, lab, lab work with a view, right? Lab spaces with a view. Uh, a lot of times, especially in, in Phoenix, uh, the laboratory spaces are on a single level or in the basement or uh, just not in the best uh, view opportunities. And, this completely changes that. And this is what we've seen as, as a great asset for employee retention, uh, satisfaction of work, uh, being able to have all the natural light that is uh, in the space and the, the awesome views. So this is the view to the north. You can see floor to ceiling glass there. This floor has 15 foot eight uh, floor to ceiling height. Um, the fifth and sixth floors have 14 but eight uh, floors. So this has a one foot additional um, exhaust, HVAC, electrical, plumbing is all stubbed to the space. So ready to go uh, for specific build outs. This is a view on the south side of the seventh floor. So you can see Dignity Cancer Center right here. Uh, U of A College of Medicine is just to the south there. Uh, this is a view looking east. Uh, so you can see out to the airport, you can see Tempe, uh, ASU's campus, uh, you can see superstitions uh, right there. So these floor plates are 34,000 square feet uh, for a full floor plate of each of these floors. We would subdivide into probably four spaces per floor if, if, if need be, but preferably keeping them in a half floor or a full floor tenant. Um, so a quarter of the floor, give or take nine, 10,000 square feet um, would be, be one of those spaces. Uh, asking rates on these floors or asking rate for laboratory space is a 10 year term, uh, $40 rate uh, with $120 of uh, tenant improvement allowance. Uh, those are all negotiable and, and can be worked through a lot of it depends on the strength of the company's financials and history of the company um, and can be adjusted. If it's, if it's straight office, though, that's not preferred. Uh, we want this to be a fully lab building. If it's straight office, there is a lower rate at uh, asking rate at $30 triple net. That's an annual rate. Uh, so is the $40 triple net annual rate. Um, and that would be a 10 year term with $70 of uh, tenant improvement allowance. So that dollars to be able to build out, build out the space for those who are not familiar with that. Um, and our, our bro brokerage uh, is Alexander Loy with Colliers International. Uh, so she's uh, recently joined our team and leading out uh, for us uh, in attracting tenants from Primarily focusing on outside the market, but also inside the market. Uh, we've got great relationships with economic development with the city of Phoenix and Claudia, her team and Chris Mackey and all of the others that have been so supportive. So I uh, appreciate the time today. I'll open it up for questions again. And if there's anything else that I can, can add or answer, happy to do so. Uh, the base size for the loading bay, uh, John, I believe that's your answer, or is the base size between columns? Lab modules so on the floor. Yeah, 30-foot 30, 30 columns spacing, um, so very significant columns. Column 
30 by 30? Give or take. There's some areas that's larger, some areas that are smaller, just depending on how the, how the layout is. But, but I'm not trying to get too far into the weeds. <laughs> nope, nope. I, 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 in, into the weeds is totally fine. We've got time. If there's specific questions, happy to, happy to answer them. And I, I can see that the sunlight is making me look really strange right now. Sorry. <laughs> I'll turn my camera here, try to get some of that sun off. Maybe, maybe not. It's like they're trying to beam you up to the mothership. <laughs> <laughs> I get I get some morning reflection. I, I just placed my desk here a couple weeks or like two weeks ago, and I'm still trying to figure out where the sun lands on it. But um, any any other questions about the space specifically, or the Phoenix Biomedical Campus, or downtown, or future future projects, anything that way. Kyle, I have a question. Thank you yeah. so much for taking the time today and uh, speaking with us and presenting. You're welcome. Uh, it's really wonderful. Um, so uh, what is the estimated lead time, do you say, for a smaller lab or some, that's uh, something that's already built out versus or semi-built out on one of the um, lower floors versus something um, on the top floor? Yeah, that's a, that's a great, great question. Um, so a couple of different things. One, we are working uh, working on uh, a, a model and I haven't touched on this too much in that uh, we're still not announced or not finalized on it. So just kind of that as a caveat to build out the whole fifth floor as a, as a turnkey space for small, smaller groups, uh, 5,000 or 500 square feet, like single lab user to 2000 square feet timeframe. So we're still in the, the approval process on that and trying to work through the details of operations on that. Um, that space would be, if we start here shortly, would be available by the end of the year for sure. Um, if a group wanted to do like an 8,000 square foot build out or a 10,000 square foot build out um, in the sixth or seventh floor, uh, give or take eight months to 10 months, just depending on the complexity of the build out and the permitting timeframe. Uh, so for sure, uh, if anybody was ready to go uh, easily by the end of the year uh, at, at this point, uh, if not a little bit sooner. Great, thank and you. Kyle, and Kyle, you, that sounds like it's a, is that kind of like incubator space almost on the fifth floor? That's that's a goal, yeah. Uh, we, we, we wouldn't, it wouldn't be an incubator in that uh, we're not going to be taking equity of company or anything like that. We wouldn't be exchanging rent for equity or anything in that regard. I would be a, it'd be a straight real estate transaction to some degree, um, but allow for the incubator scenario and environment, right? Of collaboration with other companies, 10 to 15 companies on the floor um, and the opportunity to collaborate and rub shoulders with those groups, all private lab scenarios. So we wouldn't do shared bench. Uh, at this point, the, haven't seen the demand for shared bench at, in the market yet. Um, and it would be a full service rate as well. So it'd be higher rates than what we discussed. Uh, that's the big part that we're still trying to finalize uh, is how that, trying to get that as low as possible uh, for the market. Um, and those that would include internet re reception, utilities, uh, some shared, some shared equipment, shared services. So just wanted to announce a few things and, and say Great. thank you very much, Kyle. Um, again, and uh, so this session is recorded, and we will be posting it to the easy bio website under the peer session, as well as emailing the link to the recording to um, all registrants. So uh, just in case the uh, there was a problem with the link getting in. Uh, sorry there, Jared. Um, we will e uh, email you the full recording um, of the session to that. And um, secondly, I wanted to remind everyone about the March 16th uh, AZ Bio Peers session, uh, which we will be hosting with GPEC and Sun Corridor um, to discuss uh, recruiting uh, what Arizona is doing to recruit companies um, and talent to the Valley uh, and to the greater uh, Arizona, to Arizona. Um, so that's going to be on um, at eight o'clock on March 16th and um, it'll be in the loop um, for a registration link or you can go to our website to register for that. Uh, it seems like there are a couple questions in the chat. 
I am just putting in my contact information for everybody. So there's my cell phone and my email. If anybody has questions, feel free to, to grab those uh, and look forward to connecting with anybody. And we are doing small in-person tours, uh, socially distanced with masks. Uh, so if anybody is looking to, to come see the space in person, happy to schedule that individually uh, and be safe in doing so. We definitely look forward to meeting you in person and seeing the building in person. Um, and let's see. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate you joining and spending some time with me this morning and appreciate your interaction and uh, all that you guys do for the industry. <laughs>